Alright. Probably see. I hope you can see. I got the camera sitting up higher. So you're not looking level at what I'm doing here up above it. Get the bird's eye view. Looking straight down and uh, you should see this area of the state that I'm uh, working on. And uh, got my spoke shaved here that I just sharpened. And uh, we'll see how it's going to shave wood. If it's grabbing and sticking and jumping, your blade's too deep. You need to shallow it up some. You're trying to take too much at one time. Believe me, that sixteenth of an inch blade sticking out the bottom here will take off plenty. And you notice I'm not wearing gloves. You don't need it for running this thing. This tool is sweet. It don't work me near as hard as a draw knife does. And uh, you see those on my hand? Calluses and blisters that have already broken and came off. I got blisters on the tips of my finger, my thumb, here on the palm of my hand. This one over here, not so much. I got calluses, but no blisters because I'm mostly push and pull with my right hand because I'm right handed. But uh, I've never gotten a blister from using this. Uh, you just you supply the forward momentum and let the, the tool do the work. Uh, you can use a flat little flat blade screwdriver or I like an exacto knife or razor knife because sometimes this area right in between the body and the blade will get clogged up and I just take my take my razor knife and just clean that out run that down through there that way you don't have to take the blade off and try to clean underneath of it reset it and all that little tricks that you'll pick up here and there but uh I'll shut up and go to work on this and just let you see. Basically we got white wood with some yellow showing through and I've got draw knife marks in here where I was just really chunking her off of there so I need to get those evened out first but uh, get those cleaned up and uh, when you hit a spot where it wants to jump over take your take your spoke shave and turn it sideways and work it off towards the edge because if you just keep uh, hitting those washboards there your knife just going to keep your, your knife blade on your spoke shape it's just going to keep jumping over and making them worse just like ruts in a road the more you run over them, the worse they get so uh, get those little areas worked off going the whole length. There we go. There's one there. Notice I'm not too concerned about the pin knots. There's a pretty good size knot here. There's a pin knot here. Pin knot here. A couple pin knots up here. Don't worry about until I get down to the ring that I want. And I'm going to leave that ring that I'm keeping built up on the edges of the pin knot and uh, that's been plenty for me so far I haven't had one take off splitting on me because I didn't leave three or four rings above it on that pin knot so at this point they get shaved down like a pimple you will see that white wood coming off slowly and the yellow coming through my knife is actually just a little too deep the this stuff gets stuck right in here run that blade of your uh, exacto knife through there get that stuff out don't scrape it back and forth across your blade you just sharpened though you don't want to do that I need to shallow this up just a little bit. That'll make it glide a whole lot smoother. You don't need to fight it. Don't fight the knife. Don't try to push down on it real hard. Just push it forward like that. Notice I'm, I'm not even putting any pressure on it down, just enough to hold it 
it'll find its uh, its flat spot there on the stave. But uh, just keep pressure against the stave with it and keep it going forward. It's got a rhythm, and uh, you got to feel that rhythm. Try to hit the high spots. Work on the edge of your stave. Come back towards the the top or the crown. Work your way around to the other edge. Hit it a few licks. Come back over the top. Do that until all my all my white wood's gone, and I can see yellow through there. A whole lot easier than trying to do all of this with the draw knife. Sometimes you got to pick your little curlies off of there, but most time they'll fall off of there. Next one will push them out. Blade is still just a little bit deep. Dig that gunk out of there. Loosen up my thumb screw. I keep pressure on top of this red deal here with my thumb, the keeper, because I don't want to lose my blade depth altogether. Give it about another quarter turn on each side. We'll come back. Had to pause there for a minute and worked on the depth on my blade a little bit. But uh I got this out here down to the yellow that I want and uh, still working on this up here these chunks here that you took out with a draw knife you want to kind of even those up or come off to the edge so your knife won't hang up on when you go past it here once you get her smoothed out it'll be working fine you can watch that turn from white to yellow as I go get these chunks off of here Sapwood grabs a whole lot more than your actual Osage does for whatever reason. Softer or not as dense, I guess. But that hardwood underneath, you get rid of, get rid of the sapwood on here. That hardwood underneath doesn't grab near as bad. You have to kind of watch around your knots. You don't want to grab one and peel a great big chunk out of your stave here. The little bitty ones, little bitty pen knots, I'm not paying a whole lot of attention to them, but these bigger ones, like this one I'm working on right here, it's actually, uh, that's actually two pin monster side by side. This one here is a little bit bigger one. Like I said, I'll work them down. I get down to the target ring that I want. This stage is going to be sold anyway, so I'm not taking it down any further than what it is. I'm just cleaning the sapwood off, seal it, and sell it. Let them uh, 
do what they want to do with it after that. But uh, I can actually chase all the way down to, or shave rather, all the way down to the ring that I want. Spoke shave. I'm still just a hair deep. And uh, I'll stay just above it and then scrape it down to the ring that I'm going to keep. And uh, I won't even take a chance on cutting through it. But I can get right down to it. A whole lot less work getting there with a spoke shave. This tool here doesn't... Doesn't work me near as hard as that draw knife does. Turn her wife to yellow. Show you something else. You see where that uh, that hardwood comes closer to the top here on the center than it does the sides. It's darker right through the middle here. I'm gonna stay away from that now and try to get this off the sides here. Another good thing about the spoke shave, you can watch it all while you're you're working right here above it. Got this blade set right you can actually watch each individual ring come off you could probably even count the strokes how many it took to get those uh to get that one ring off Once you start working a certain direction, like I started back there, working my way this way, just leapfrogging, come back, work forward, come back, work forward. Don't turn around and try to come back this way once you get going, because all you're going to do is peel this wood up. You'll get underneath over here, it's all shaved down this way, and that blade will get underneath and it'll tear that up, and uh, you'll end up making a mess if you do that. Try to stay the same direction all the way down. Oh, get a rhythm when you 
get the blues, come on, get a rhythm. You get the blues. Get that spoke shape moving, get a rhythm. Spoke shape moving, get a rhythm. And you get the blues, come on, get a rhythm. You get the blues, come on, get a rhythm. That's how you do that.